Hey, welcome to Visual Radio. Tonight is uh, August 25th, 2011. My wonderful guest, Jerry Ross, is um, a little under the weather tonight. So we're going to talk to Jerry on September 8th. And we want to talk about Nick Ashford, uh, the late Nick Ashford now, unfortunately. Nick Ashford died on Monday. And he wrote a lot of great songs, including I Don't Need No Doctor, big hit for Ray Charles. Uh, Let's Go Get Stoned, which Joe Cocker sang at Woodstock. There's all these great YouTubes of Nick Ashford, Ashford and Valerie Simpson, but my guest tonight here is Kevin Russo, film critic. Yeah. Remember Me is a song that Nick and his wife Valerie wrote for Diana Ross. And I love that song. It's one of my favorite songs of all time. And it's an underrated hit, and um, Nick Ashford co-wrote it. Nick and his wife Valerie sang on a very good friend of mine's record. We lost my friend last year. Yeah. So I this guy, Jerry, was the producer, and Jerry's going to call in two weeks. So tonight, we're going to talk movies. We're going to have Frank Della Strito on. Cool. We're going to have Johnny Byers on. What was the last movie you saw? Uh, the last movie I saw was Insidious, which I thought in, the ending was, was weird. It stopped in, it stopped just too early and just dead stopped. Did you see it on TV or at the movies? I saw it on um, Fios. Ah. So I have on demand and everything, so. Yeah. It's a new movie? It's a new movie, yes. Okay, I missed that one, Insidious. Anyone of any note in it? Um, I forget this girl's name, but she played a lot of other ones. Um, I forget the names of the other movies that she played. I, s I saw The Box the other night. You saw that. Yes. And it's got Frank Langella and Cameron Diaz and James Marsden. I like Marsden. He was in um, the new Superman movie, Superman Returns. Yeah. He's the X-Men, Cyclops, right? Yeah, James Marsden. Yeah, yeah he, he played a good Cyclops. Uh, sometimes yeah. they misfire with these comic book actors, but Cyclops, he fit the bill pretty good. Um, as we were talking yesterday about the box, I think Cameron Diaz is a very good actress. And I think James Marsden is a really good actor. In Frank Langella, I saw him at the Wang Center when my niece was born. She's like 35 now. But when she was born, the night she was born, there was a big Boston blackout. And I was at the Frank Langella show with my friend uh, Loretta. We saw him play Dracula. Cool. Yeah, so before he did the movie, he was on stage, and he did the Wang Center. We were there. My niece was born, and we're driving through Boston, this incredible blackout. It must have been 1978. That would make her 33. So that's in the ballpark. Yeah, so 1978, yeah. I think it was. Big blackout, and I'm driving around. The Christian Science Center was all lit up. They had their own power generators. That's cool. Or maybe it was Christian Science. I don't know, but the lights were working. It's pretty cool. But the box uh, opened a lot of opportunity for thought because Frank Langella delivers a box to people's homes and you can press the button and someone will die. Well, he gives you a million dollars. You don't want to kill anyone. So that box is kind of like, it's a road, a slippery slope you don't want to go down. Yeah, uh, about that uh, slippery. Uh, there's this new movie that I, I actually would like to see, which probably happens already and exists, uh, Contagious. Oh, Contagious, yes, yes, I've heard about it. And uh, which is, you know, it, it's all this, you know, germ touching type of thing and people end up getting diseases off of this. Pretty much I think, you know, they're taking a real serious thing about uh, germs and everything and making it into a horror movie, I think that's pretty intense. It reminds me of the Andromeda Strain by Michael Crichton. Now we just yeah. lost Michael Crichton, right? The Andromeda Strain, wasn't that a, uh, some kind of thing that would end up hurting people in a mass way? I've been reading a lot about uh, the scientists theorizing about aliens and how they might try to uh, you know, some might be benevol yeah. benevolent, but others might just see us as a nuisance and want us out of the way. So how would they exterminate us? The Andromeda strain or contagious? That's just, you know, all I have to do is put it in the water and, and you know, I'm history. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, you know, this Which, is like Nirvana water. I never heard of it. Positively I pure. use Polo Springs. I mean, I love Polo Springs. I do too. But this was kind of like at Johnny's and it was like, oh, I love the, the, you know, they make the designs appealing so that you don't feel yeah. bad drinking. Well, I mean, Polo Springs is pretty good too because you got, you know, it shows you all that motion in the water and all white, which is pretty good. I like and, it. It's a good choice. Coca-Cola has its, um, what's it called? Coca-Cola has a water. I heard, I the heard, blue thing. They made, I heard that, um, they kind of made something, they use uh, Coca-Cola as um, rubber or something like that. Coca-Cola? Tire rubber. Or Pepsi. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be uh, surprised. Coca-Cola is a very interesting uh, bit of chemistry. Yeah. You know? Uh, and the, I studied the whole Coca-Cola thing in a number of books. I read the book on Roberto. Now, Roberto was the owner not the owner. Roberto was the president of Coca-Cola when they went with New Coke. Did you, did you ever know about that? No. Um, probably 20, 25 years ago, Pepsi, for the first time, had beaten Coca-Cola in one market, and that was in the supermarkets. Yeah. Coca-Cola was always supreme. But Pepsi had beat Coca-Cola in the taste test, the blindfold test, in the supermarkets. Yep. So Coke decided, okay, we have to do something. They created new Coke. Do you know what the formula was? They put, no, they took Diet Coke and put a lot more sweetener <laughs> in it to make it sweeter than Pepsi. See, I wonder what actually came first, Pepsi or Coke? Coke came first. Yeah. Um, See, I always thought that, you know, it would be... I should know the name, Pepsi. Candler, Asa, Asa Candler, I think. And the reason I can't think of the name Asa Candler is because of that movie Free Jack. Yeah. See, half my life is in movies, and, and McCandlin, McCandler, so, okay, Anthony Hopkins, but Asa Candler uh, purchased it or sold it. Um, my brain's mush tonight. My brain's really mush tonight. But um, someone bought Coke, and, and it, it predated Pepsi. Of course, you've got to watch Mommy Dearest for Pepsi. Did you ever see the movie Mommy Dearest? I heard of it, and I think I saw it, but... Joan I, Crawford, she was like the, uh, she became like the head of Pepsi. Yeah. And, and it's really good reading. If you want to learn about business, read the, the Cola Wars. The Cola Wars are like Letterman and Leno. You got the late night wars, you got the Cola Wars. So, yeah, the Pepsi and the, and the Coke battle. Well, what happened was they, they did this new Coke, and it was sweeter than Pepsi, and people were outraged. And what Roberto said before he died, he said, you can't take people's trademark away from them. They loved the original Coke. But I loved the original Coke because of the bite. I really like the taste of it, the flavor. It's just a unique drink. And I don't like Pepsi. So I just yeah. like, you know, that. And they took it away. They went and sold, I think, a billion more dollars worth. They went from one billion to two billion when they brought back classic Coke. And that's why you see classic Coke. Yeah because of the Cola Wars and the New Coke. And it was a very different time, people. It was the 80s. And Nick Ashford was big in the 80s with Solid as a Rock. Solid was the name of the song. So Nick Ashford and New Coke. That's the theme of tonight. So uh, what movies are coming up? Let me see. There's got to be... Um... I heard that they're making another Toy Story movie. Now, what did you think of the first one? The first... First one, the oh, actual no, first one. Are you one saying or? they're redoing Toy Story? Are they going to do a sequel? I'm not too sure how that's going to go. But they are making a new Lord of the Rings, The Hobbits, I call it. Yeah, because uh, J.R.R. Tolkien had The Hobbit as yeah. a book. And uh, gee, it only took these people, you know, like hundreds of, hundreds of years, uh, well, you know, 50, 60 years to figure out that Lord of the Rings would be popular. Yeah, and I think, you know, I... Uh, I like the Lord of the Rings, and I'm a big fan of those, you know, back in those days, you know, just, I have do a little stuff. I actually, one time, I made my own uh, spear, and I made my own uh, shield, but... Did you make the spear and the shield for a movie prop? Because I know um, you do movies, too. No, I kind of, because I went to King Richard Fair one day, so I kind of, you know, 
uh, dressed myself up as, you know, kind of medieval times, and that was fun. That was fun. But I loved Lord of the Rings, and I hope, you know, they actually make it out. Um, the it, Hobbit. The, the Hobbit. Hobbit um, at least lives it, up to yeah. the other three movies. Um, I didn't see the new Harry Potter. Did you? Yes, I seen all of them, and uh, they I, were they. The last movie was pretty intense. Like I was pretty much glued to my seat because of because I thought Harry Potter was surely gonna die because he, you know, he didn't really have any more family. Because uh, well, he did does, but you know, his uncle was his other family. They were a jerk to him, so. So, it was a very yeah intense, interesting series, yeah. and I've missed the last two. So the Deathly Hallows, I haven't seen either. I seen both. I was watching the original. I think it's a fantastic filmmaking. I mean, number one, it's just fantastic filmmaking. There's no way, other way to put it. They really pulled out all the stops to these beautiful movies. They're going to last a long time. Yeah. You know, um, in a way that they probably surpassed the Matrix. I thought the Matrix could have went into so many good directions. And, you know, perhaps they did with the games. Yeah. But I think the Matrix really needed to go in a different direction. And it just ended up taking this piece of this movie here and a piece of this movie there and putting it together. You know, um, uh, I, f I forget. Uh, I sh there's this movie that's a cl closet that they never made a series off of. I uh, wish I could think of the name. It could help. Well, the know. Matrix uh, series, um, they should do a new one. They should reboot it. And, and there's so much that could be done with it because scientists say that the probability that we're living inside a uh, computer program is 95%. Because we're, we're decades away from supercomputers. Yeah, which, you know, I feel like, you know, Star Trek is taking an effect. So, and I think, you know, I. I think I heard that they're probably going to make another one. Oh, they have to. I mean, it made money. It all comes down to making money. That movie, The Change Up, just did not make money. You know, as, as you told me yesterday, you know, you hated it. You know, well, I didn't hate it. No, I didn't hate it. I, I thought that the writers did a poor job with a good idea. Yeah. So you know. there's, there's things about it I dislike intensely. There's other things about it I really like. I love when there's that all of me, Lily Tomlin and Steve Martin change bodies. Yeah. Or, or Mel Gibson reading women's minds, reading thoughts, you know, what women want. I love those. A premise like that is really good. And I like what you can do with it. And I think they didn't go far enough because you hear you had two dysfunctional guys who are mirroring each other. They're friends. And so it would have been very easy for them to help each other get over whatever neuroses they had. Neurosis, I, you know, say that word for me. Neur each had yeah. a neurosis. Neuroses, I don't know. Yeah, but I don't know. They ended up like neurosis in the movie because uh, really um, it could have went here. And again, it was the dark humor and the comedy and the dirty, the dirty language that like I said, Driving Miss Daisy and Jackass, you don't put the two together. Yeah. Either be Jackass or be Driving Miss Daisy. If I'm in the mood for either, at least I know what I'm getting. See, I'm more... I like economy, but I mean, I like funny movies, yes, but more of horror movies because they bring so more... Uh, because I look into the details that they put in because I, I like to do art and I want to be more of, you know, a... A, uh, Expressionist. No, not even more like a make makeup artist and oh. staging. Oh. So you know, I've do a lot of work looking, and I do a lot of stuff on Halloween too. It's really cool. Uh, For costumes and such. Yeah, and I do my What's own. What's the shirt all about? Oh, this is uh, Rob Zombie. I oh, love Rob, Rob Zombie. Zombie. Who's from the area? Yeah, I love Rob Zombie. I went. I. Wanted to go, uh, I pretty much see, seen him in concert once, but I couldn't really stay that long. <laughs> now, what movie did he put a soundtrack to? What horror movie did Rob Zombie do a um, soundtrack to? F 
Frankenstein, Dracula? No, he, I believe, He's... oh, um, The House of One Corpse. So, but I One think Thousand One Corpse, yes. I think there's an old movie that he put a new soundtrack to. I have to look into that. Rob Zombie. But, but One Thousand One Corpse, he did his own, you know. He, his own music. Yeah, his own music and stuff like that. What's his real name? Uh, That's a good Rob. question. Rob. I, huh? I f don't know his last name. But it is Rob. It is Rob, yes. Rob Zombie. So what we do sometimes is telephone. Should we call someone? Uh, if you want, sure, it's your show. So. <laughs> 